Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you, I had a dream last night. And I quite didn't understand what it meant. And I went back to sleep and I went right back into the dream. And I got a word for you from the Lord this morning. I wrote it down because I said, okay, God, I know that this is a prophetic word from you to the church. This is not my message, but what I will tell you is this is very on time for this day and hour in which we live. The church is on fire. Physically and spiritually. I had a dream last night that the church, we had a different kind, it was a different, it wasn't this church, but we had a church and all around us was nothing but fields. Hay fields. And everything in the church was on fire. The fire was blazing hot. Nobody could get close to the church. The fields around it were on fire. And everybody was running and saying, Pastor Shane, the church is on fire. I said, hallelujah, it's on fire. Because see, this is what God said. On the inside, it's a new day. There's a new church about to rise up. The spirit is on fire on the inside. God's words being preached on the inside, but on the outside, in the physical, where the flames were burning, is God dealing with the world. Yes. God's taking away the old. Yes. God's taking away the bad yes. and raising up something new. Yes. God's doing something in His house. Yes. That's what I kept hearing Him say. I'm doing a new in my house. Yes. See, a lot of times yes. pastors get it wrong. They think it's their church. But no, it's God's church. And he is raising up pastors, men and women of God to preach forth the gospel. He said he's doing a new thing in his church. Amen? Amen. God's doing something, church. I'm going to tell you, I know every one of you in this room personally. And I, I prayed. I said, God, I know there's a word for your people today. What would you have me to say? How would you use me in a message today? And this is what he told me. The storms are over. Your storm is over. I know that means a lot to a lot of people in this room. There's a lot of people that should be in this service today. And the only thing that I can say is, shame on you. Shame on you. Because I'm going to tell you, the storm is over. I sat in a doctor's office this week. I went through a years and years worth of storm in the physical body. I was over consumed with high blood pressure. I was consumed with sugar diabetes being in the 700s. They wanted to put an insulin pump in my stomach. I was consumed over health heart issues in my body. I was consumed with diverticulitis. I was consumed with health issues at a young age. Pastor, you're not so young. I am. Don't let the facial hair be a white on my face deceive you. I got my doctor's report that day. My sugar was 700 and something. Now is 89. My, my high blood pressure, which was way up above the charts, was 118 over 77. Thank you, beautiful. Was 117, I mean 118 over 77. My God has done a new thing. I'm going to tell you, I have no heart issues whatsoever. Yesterday I walked, I swear, 7,000 miles outside and never once that I was short of breath. Never once did I have to take a sugar break to check my sugar. But my God has healed me completely. That storm in my life is completely over. Brother Ray's storm is coming to an end. He's about to get up out of the bed and move and walk forth with no, you hear me, no physical ailments, no, no uh, paralysis. That's not the word I was looking for. What is it when you can't move? Y'all help me. What is it? He's not going to be paralyzed anywhere. You are right in the legal name. But I don't speak legal terms. Medical or whatever. See, the devil has come against the church and the people long enough. And it's a new day. And your storm 
is over. It's not the storm that gets us. It's the reaction to the storm. Amen. Amen. Just for a minute, I want to talk to you about the storm and the boat where the disciples and Jesus was at. I'm going to tell you, I read this over and over and over again. Because I, 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 I prayed and I asked God, I said, God, you use me today. And this was a right on time message. Y'all forgive me because you may be cold out there, but it is very hot. Fall, we welcome you. Amen. This fat ball here preaching it gets hot up there. Thank you, brother. If you have your Bibles, I want to I want you to turn with me to Mark chapter 4 and verse 35. We're going to start there. We got a lot to read. I'm not reading from the King James Version this morning, so don't don't whip me. Don't be mad at me. Don't 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 say ugly things about your pastor, but I like the way this version I'm reading this morning put it. But in Mark chapter 4, we're going to start in verse 35. As evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross over to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and they started out. But soon a bad storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat and the boat began to fill with water. Now, I'm going to ask you, how many's ever been in a boat? How many's ever been in a, in a boat and the waves start knocking and start spilling the water? I can tell you my wife can't swim. We went fishing one time. We was all the way on the other lake, on the other side of the lake. And she said, why does the boat have water in it? There's no way that this boat should have water inside the boat. That's why we're supposed to be dry. We're inside the boat, Shane. What's going on? Jesus was sleeping in the back of the boat with his head on a pillow. The disciples woke him up shouting, Teacher, teacher, don't you care that we're going down? Jesus woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Peace, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped and there was great calm. Then asked them, Why are you afraid? Do you have faith? The disciples were absolutely terrified. Then they asked each other, Who is this man that even the wind and waves have to obey him? Hallelujah. Isn't it amazing that we've got a God that says, Peace be still, and the waves come to a complete halt. The wind stops to blow. That's who we serve. Amen. That's our Father. What to do when the storm comes. See, a lot of times we just go into the storm and we don't know what to do. We don't know how to fight. We just endure the storm and we ride in that boat and we're terrified the whole way. Amen? Yeah. Guilty as charged. But remember the promise of Jesus. Let's cross over to the other side is what he said. He didn't say, I'm going to take you to the storm and let the boat be consumed and you're going to drown and die in the middle of the lake. What he said was, let's get to the other side. Amen? Yes. This was a promise. And when Jesus said he would promise something, he's going to do it. Yes. Church, even if the boat went down that day, that would have been the first submarine ever put forth on this world. Yes. That's the kind of God we serve. Yes. If Jesus said, elephants are going to lay eggs, you can take it to the bank and get a frying pan. And start eating elephant eggs. That's the kind of God we serve. Yeah. The minute Jesus said. Let's cross over to the other side. Neither the devil nor the demons in hell. Would ever be able to stop. The boat from getting to the other side. That's the kind of God we serve. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I'm going to try to keep my. I'm going to try to somewhat keep. In my notes this morning. Good luck with that. You got that right. I'm going to tell you, your past has been in a storm because God gives us words. We pray over people and we, we, we don't get the results. There's results that happen in people's lives, but they keep it to themselves. And your pastor sits and wonders, 
Is it actually working? God, I know who you are and I know what you can do. But is it actually working? Am I doing this in vain, Lord? But God said, no. And you know, it's amazing how God shows up and shows out right at the midst of your storm. Because, see, I had to go somewhere Tuesday night. And when I got there, I had people that was in the service here on Sunday night and was in the service a couple of months ago. And they said, I've got to tell you something. The prophetic words that you gave over my life, and you read me like a book time and time again. There were so many things you said. Every one of those came to pass Friday. Friday before the Tuesday. And nobody knows what we were going through. Not even my dad. And you said everything, and everything that you said that God gave you came to pass on Friday. <coughs> and then I had another pastor that was here Sunday night. I gave him a prophetic word and said, God's about to bless you with a church. And I said, just so you know, the church has two double glass doors on the front of it. He said, Pastor, Monday when I woke up, I got a phone call to go look at a building. And when I pulled up in the parking lot and went through the two glass doors, I knew that this was the place. See, God's using that. I told him that he was going to have a bus. Monday afternoon, he got a 70-passenger bus. See, God's doing a new thing. God is showing the people, his people, what he can do. Church, see, if that boat had not made it to the other side, Jesus would have lied. And my Jesus is not a liar. Right. Amen. Jesus cannot lie. Right. What he said he would promise, he would do. But, church, I have news for you. The sun will stop shining. The moon will stop glowing. The stars will stop twinkling. The wind will stop. The waves will stop crashing. And every promise that God said that he would do, he'll bring you through every one of those storms. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Because, see, God never said in his word that storms wouldn't hit us. That's right. But what he did say, right. then he'd get us to the other side. Right. See, sometimes God has to put you in the storm yeah. to get you through it. Right. Amen? Good. Sometimes God has to put people in your path to, dis to, to cause disruption. To cause confusion. To mock you. But God did say, touch not my anointed. Touch not my. I'm going to tell you. I told you I wasn't. I was going to try to stay on my notes, but I lied to you. God's about to do something. Something you never even thought of. God never said once we're saved we're on this rainbow full of clouds and stars and we eat skittles all day long <laughs> but what he did say was fear not for I will bring you through every trial yes. every tribulation yes. every storm yes. I will never put on you more than you can bear even though sometimes it looks like you're at the end. I have got you completely covered. Amen. Isaiah 43 and verse 2 says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. How many times have you ever said, I'm fed up in here? I thought about that when I said, when it says, the river shall not overflow you. We're never over here. But sometimes we get right up to here. And we have to put our head up. Say, okay, God. What you doing now? He says, I'm about to do a new thing. Church, we have. Church, we have and are going to go through a lot of storms. But my Father is the answer to every one of them. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you, when I went into the doctor's office on Thursday, and I sat down at the doctor's office, and she, she told me, she said, I don't know exactly what you're doing, but whatever it is, 
keep up the good work. And I said, the only thing that I can tell you that I have done is I've sought after God about his will in my health. Because, see, I seek after God on everything in my life. And that one just kind of fell through the wayside. And I said, God, if you've done all this stuff in my life, I know you can complete me, complete, heal me from the inside out. She looked at me and she said, your blood pressure, even since the last time you were here, which was six months ago, is even better. Your blood pressure is even better. And you have this thing, or you had this thing, called neuropathy, where it keeps you up at night. She said, but see, God is, and it's amazing because my doctors, of course you know them, they're Christians. Now how many times when you go to a doctor and they tell you you're Christians? Or they're, they're, they're Christians. And she said, I can tell you God's healing you from you, the, neuro the neuropathy. I said, no ma'am, I said, he's healed me from the neuropathy. Yes. I said, healing is something you're going through. But see, I've already gone through it. And she said, well, why don't we do this? Why don't we take you off of that medicine? And I said, well, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's one thing I ain't got to take. And I'm going to tell you, for the last few nights, I, I, I just, I'm out. But God has still given me dreams and visions in the middle of the the midnight hour. I've asked him for certain things and he has given them. But she said, I, I, I don't know what you're doing, but you continue to do it because you've lost 46 pounds and your sugar's better. Your your blood pressure's better. She says, I want to do an A1C. If anybody knows what A1C is, this three months check you. I said, we can do that, but I was here six months ago. You knew what my sugar was. I'm here six months later. You know what my sugar is. It ain't deviated. So that's just a test that Y'all are going to have to run. But I went and I put my arm out there. And they put that blood. They started taking the blood out of my arm. And that lady, she, I don't even know what she was saying. But she was trying to talk to me about something. And all I could think was, I said it out loud, hallelujah. And I looked up at her. And she, she said, what? I said, hallelujah. I said, because you're taking the blood out of my arm. But see, God showed me through his blood. I'm completely healed. Through his blood, all that is in this world is about to be changed. Through his blood, salvation comes forth. Through his blood, we shall live forevermore. She looked at me and she said, where did that come from? I said, I just told you. God's reminded me that through the blood, I see the blood coming out of my arm. But through my blood, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for his blood. Through his blood, everything is possible. She just began to smile at me. I've never seen her before, but she's a tech from somewhere else. And she just began to smile. I don't know if they can or cannot say anything. But she said, yes, sir. And I thought, through the blood of Jesus Christ, all things are possible. Amen. Every storm will dissipate. Jesus knew the storm was coming on the boat. But he still had the peace and the faith to lay down and take a nap. Now I'm going to ask you, in the midst of a storm, all hell coming against you, how many of us in this room can lay down and take a peaceful nap? My God shall supply all of my needs. And he needed a nap that day. And he laid down. And I can just imagine, as I'm studying for this sermon, I can just imagine the disciples saying, Oh, Lord, you see the winds coming, Peter? You see those? You see the, 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 the waves starting to crash? What, what are we going to do? And, and Peter said, I don't know. I, I, I've never been in this storm like this. we got to go wake up. we got to go wake up Jesus. And I can imagine it taking them a good little while, kind of like my wife trying to get me up out of the bed on Sunday morning to come to church. But I can just imagine him shaking him and saying, Jesus, what's going on here? They were in such fear. And Jesus saying, hold on. What, why are y'all why are y'all having so much turmoil on this boat? I got this. Peace be still. Peace be still. Chill out. That's the kind of father we serve. That's the kind of father we serve. 
Jesus had led them into the storm. Many people think when the storms come that they're out of the will of God. Well, I don't know what I've done to deserve this. I don't know what's going on in my life. I didn't think that I had been living wrong to deserve this kind of storm. Say so they put too much blame on a storm against whatever they're going through on God. God did this. God did this. God's making all this happen, and I don't understand. See, we've all been there. That's right. Amen? Yeah. I'm your pastor, and I've been a pastor of this church for five years, and I've said the very same thing. I don't know what I've done to endure such a great storm. But I've heard God say, why not you? I've heard God say, I put you in this storm so that I can carry you through it. Because if I wasn't here, you'd have never made it through the storm. I put you in the midst of the storm so I can change your life. I put you in the midst of the storm so that when you preach, you're preaching from my word. I put you in the midst of the storm because if it wasn't for the storm, you would have lost your mind. See, that's the kind of follow we have. We take that for granted every day. Well, it couldn't happen that way. That's exactly the way it was supposed to happen. See, because every time God does something, it's for our good. Every storm that we endure is for us. The disciples <clears throat> were not in the storm because of disobedience. They were in the storms because of obedience. See, God was trying to show them something. He was trying to show them, you've got to trust in me, and I'll pull you through every storm. See, Jesus wasn't about to let that boat go down. He wasn't about to let that go down. If you think he thought it was going to go down, well, he had been sleeping. The storm was rugged. The boat was filled up with water, and the disciples were full of fear. Then they ran to Jesus, who was asleep, and asked him, Do you not even care? That were about to go down. Jesus was at peace while the disciples were falling, falling to pieces. The disciples was they're about to lose their minds. Church, now is not the time to panic. See, because if we look at what's going on around us, it's just like my dream that I had last night that God gave me. It's just like what the church is about to go through. The outside's about to catch on fire. God's about to do a new thing. But on the inside of the church, it's on fire for God. The Holy Spirit is coming forth. Why do you think that the services that we've been in has been so powerful? Because, see, God's about to show up in a new way. See, God never left. That's what we keep saying. God showed up, showed out. He never left this place. But sometimes he goes a little dormant and allows us to go through the storm to see how we're going to praise him through the storm. Because, see, for, for him I live, for, for him I die. Ain't that what you say? See, that's what we got to be at. Because, see, nothing is impossible with God. He is our supplier. Remember the power of Jesus. Jesus woke up and rebuked the wind. Jesus woke up and rebuked the waves. And he said, peace be still. Suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calmness. There is no way you're hot this morning. Everybody always talks, I need a blanket to church. I need to bring a blanket. <laughs> Jesus did not keep the storms thinking. Jesus did not keep the storms from striking the boat, but what he did do is keep the boat from sinking. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen? When Jesus said, let's cross over, he didn't promise a smooth sailing. Lord, how mercy. But he did guarantee a safe land. He did guarantee a safe land. I said this time and time again up here. I had a grandmother for years had cancer. Until the last day she drew her last breath, she thanked God for every day she was on this world. Because she had another day to pray for her family. God allowed her to live one more day on this earth to pray for her dying 
going to hell, fam. And for nothing else, the Friday before she passed away, she looked at me and she said, stop running, Shane. Go to your calling. God's called you to preach. Why are you running? Hallelujah. Thank you for our grandmother who prayed for her children and grandchildren even to the very last second of her life. Every time you face a storm in life, you can face it with fear or with faith. Fear looks like the storm. Faith looks just like the Savior. Amen? Jesus said to us to, and saying to us today, Fear not, I am with you, and I will always be with you. Amen? See, the, the amazing thing that we serve in all time God is that he's there 24-7, 365, even on Christmas Day, Easter, and every other holiday. When everybody else is checked out and don't want to come to church because it's not convenient for them, God's still here. Amen? When, when they can't seem to find the words to pray because they're in the midst of the storm, Jesus said, I'll show you through the storm anyway. All you got to do is just call upon my name, Jesus, J-E-S-U-S. That's all we have to remember. Amen? Yeah. How many in this room this morning is in the boat of fear? How many in this room this morning is in the boat of faith? Because, see, we all want to say we're in the boat of faith. But when that storm comes, I want you to ask yourself, what boat am I really in? What boat am I in today? How many trust that Jesus is in every storm of your life? How many in here trust that he's the only way? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. When you get that call that you're least expecting, God's in that storm as well. You know that after every storm, God replaces everything beautiful. I've been in a, I've been in, through a storm where the land catches on fire in the mountains. In the midst of that fire, it looks nasty. It smells awful. And everything after it's done is just burned up and it's black. It just, it just smells real bad. But then there's a process that God replaces everything so much prettier and greener mm -hmm. and better. I've seen hurricanes. We've just seen one this past week where it seems like devastation hits the land and there's no way around it. There's no recovering from it. It's it. The world as we know it's over. That's what it looks like. But it's amazing how when God shifts the wind and he allows the land to be so disruptive, when it comes back, it's more beautiful than it's ever been before. Why do you think the seasons change? See, wintertime comes to kill off all the vegetation because there has to come a fertilization. That's what he's doing in our lives and our heart. Sometimes we have to go through the storms to be fertilized. I looked out there in the pasture yesterday and I said, it's time to start buying more hay for these animals because all the green vegetation is starting to die off. But see, I know next year when I put the Holy Ghost fertilizer on it, it starts coming this dark green grass and it takes over and that's God's way of saying, I'm going to help you feed Hallelujah. Monday morning when I woke up after the service we had last Sunday night, the devil was right there in my bedroom trying to talk in my ear. Then he showed up again on Tuesday. Then he was there on Wednesday. Then he was there on Thursday. And he tried to come in this morning. But I'm going to tell you something. Through every storm, God's always there. Right. Pastor, you don't understand what storm I'm facing. Yeah. Pretty sure I do. See, I've had my own storms. And I can tell you, as a pastor, it seems like every storm gets worse and worse and worse. <laughs> But through every storm, God is making better and better and better. See, because I'm going to tell you, the devil hates pastors. That devil hates you. Just in five years, I can, I, I, I can tell you several times, 
that the devil has tried to take me out. But God said, not today. Touch not my servant. Touch not my anointed. Because he has a work to do for me. He's trying to take my wife out. But not today. She's my servant. She's got a work to do. See, he's trying to take you out. But not today. John, he's tried to take you out multiple times. Probably even this week. But your God is about to supply every need in yes. your life. Amen. And he's about to flip it upside down. Yes. Amen? Right. Amen? See, the church, as we know it, it's over. I was asking a meeting this week. What denomination are you? In a room full of pastors. I said, I don't understand the question. I knew what he was asking. I don't think he's stupid. I want to know, are you Baptist? Are you Pentecostal? Are you Methodist? No. He said it again. And I knew all these pastors in this room was trying to stare a hole in me. I said, what I can tell you is we're Christians. We believe in preaching the Bible. We believe in the Holy Spirit. We believe in the gifts of the Spirit. We believe in speaking in tongues. We believe if you lay your hands on somebody, you're anointed and God's using you, they'll be healed. They'll be set free. They'll be delivered. That room erupted when I said it that way. I'm not Baptist. I'm not Pentecostal. I'm not Methodist. But what I am is a child of God that he's called to preach his word and to use however he sees fit. And with that, storms are coming. With that, every morning we have to put on our breastplate, breastplate of righteousness. We have to grab that sword. We have to go ahead and battle. Don't we, Becky? Even when the enemy is sitting right in front of you. So I'm going to ask you again in closing. What boat are you in this morning? Are you in the boat of fear? Are you in the boat of faith? Amen.